All right, what's going on, guys? It is time for my official Modern Warfare review. The game has been out for over a week now, so I've played it quite a bit. As you can see, here are my qualifications for the review. Doing pretty good so far. I'd say 90% of my games played are either Domination or Headquarters, so I'm mainly basing my experience of the game off of those two game modes, although I have played a little bit of TDM, Free For All, and Ground War as well, but honestly, 10v10 Domination is where I spend the majority of my time. So, let's go ahead and get into it. I think we'll start off with just some general gameplay thoughts. I actually really enjoy how the game feels. However, I don't like the way that the game plays, if that makes sense. Like, I really like how the gunfights go down in this game. You know, the hit detection feels really smooth and everything. However, my issue is the lack of gunfights in general because nobody wants to move. Let's talk about that for a second, right? That's pretty much the number one complaint about this game is the way that people play and it's not a coincidence so if you guys missed my last video long story short the developers have literally come out and said in an interview that they made this game to cater to new players instead of the hardcore fan base so the reason that the maps play like this is because they purposely designed them to give new players as many safe spaces to camp in as possible so they could feel more comfortable now I know that sounds like I'm trolling but the clip is in my last video I don't want to go over all that again but that's literally the reason why this game is the way that it is so that being said I don't know if we can expect much of a change with the pace of the game because this is the way they intended it to be right and I mean mission accomplished I guess because nobody wants to move including myself and it's not that I don't want to move you know it's not like I'm scared I don't want to leave my safe space, but I'm just so concerned about being sound horde because the footsteps are so loud, or I'm just concerned that somebody camping in a corner or in a window or whatever is just going to shoot me without me even having a chance to react to it. You know what I mean? So let's talk about the footsteps first, right? They got to do something about that, man. Like, thankfully, Dead Silence actually works now. They patched it from when the game released, but let's be honest, man. Having Dead Silence as a field order Order, it's not a real solution to the problem like yeah thanks I can be silent for like 20% of the game whenever I activate it cool like that's great but how about instead of that we actually make dead silence a perk like it has been in every other Call of Duty or at the very least if you don't want to do that can we at least decrease the volume of footsteps in this game because not only do we not have dead silence as a perk I'm pretty sure compared to other Call of Duties the volume of of footsteps in general is way way higher like I almost never run dead silence in pubs of any other cod and I've played every single cod dead silence is meant for s and d pubs sure and sometimes it's meant for respawn in competitive because you know there's less people there's less going on you know it's more of like a try hard environment people do use dead silence in competitive but nobody was running dead silence in black ops 2 hardpoint public matches like come on man it wasn't needed the footsteps were not that loud but in this game I actually do not feel safe when I'm sprinting around the map because I know somebody somewhere in some building is going to hear me and they're going to shoot me because I'm moving and they're not. So now last but not least when it comes to general gameplay, the mini map. Listen man, I was going to try to deal with it. I was going to compromise with you guys, but I can't man. It, it really is not an option because part of the reason that people are not moving in this game is because there are no red dots on the mini map. Like, like, you have to understand that the majority of Call of Duty players are not very good. They don't have the awareness of a Call of Duty veteran athlete, right? So, if they don't see red dots on the minimap, they don't know what to do. They are completely clueless. And when they are lost like that, they're like, okay, well, I don't know where to go. So, I'm just going to go camp in this building by my spawn until I see someone, right? And they're perfectly happy doing that. But if there were some red dots on the map, then maybe they would feel a little bit more confident about 
about venturing out into the world and maybe killing some people because now they actually have an idea of where these people might be. I really think just a normal minimap would really help the pace of the game and reduce the camping quite a bit. So that's pretty much it for the general thoughts on the game. Let's let's get a little bit more detailed now. I'll start off with the game mode. So for some reason, Hardpoint is still not in public matches despite the fact that it's in private matches for competitive and they're already playing it for the league and stuff. I, I don't really understand the logic, honestly. I think Hardpoint would be good for this game because that's a game mode where people are pretty much forced to move because you don't have a constant spawn point like you would in certain game modes. Like you're constantly spawning out in different parts of the map. The action is constantly rotating to different parts of the map wherever the hard point is. So it's a lot harder for someone to just camp in a building in the back of the map because they're not going to see anyone the entire game unless the hard point is by where they're camping, right? So I don't know what the holdup is with hard point, but we need to go ahead and add that to pubs because I feel like that would probably be the least camper friendly game mode in the game. But as far as the game modes that are in the game, uh, if you guys have ever played free for all, uh, I recommend just trying it out so you can see how awful of an experience it actually is. I don't know who enjoys playing free for all in this game, but when you play free for all, the majority of the games do not even hit the 30 kill limit because absolutely nobody wants to move because the footsteps are so loud. The person who wins the game ends up with like 21 kills in a 10 minute free for all. Like they can't even hit the limit. It's pretty sad, honestly. Like if you want to get upset at the game for people camping, go play free for all and you will experience camping like you have never seen before in Call of Duty, man. And honestly, TDM is right there behind it. A lot of your TDMs will go to the time limit as well. And God forbid you get Aenea Palace as the map. You may as well back out because that's guaranteed a full time limit game. I don't know why that map is in 10v10. Clearly it was not created for 10v10. It's like a 20v20 or a ground war map or something. I don't know why it's in the game for these other game modes. Doesn't make any sense. Uh, also, side note about TDM. TDM, can we please show the debts on the scoreboard? I understand you're trying to create a, a safe environment for gamers or whatever, but I'd like to know what my score is in the middle of the game. I mean, it's a video game. You know, you don't have to protect people's feelings if they're going one in 10. Like it's not that big of a deal. It's just a game. I would like to know my score. So anyways, final game mode that I, I want to talk about, Ground War. Honestly, not a big fan. It's, it's okay. It's really hit or miss for me. I haven't played it that much, but really the tanks ruin the game mode for me. The fact that you can get a nuke, you can earn your kill streaks and get a nuke in a fucking tank is one of the most retarded things I have ever heard in Call of Duty. People just get in the tank off spawn, drive it up on the hill, park it at the top of the hill and just shoot their tank at everyone and then call in a nuke. How does that make any sense? I don't know. It's actually one of the worst things I have ever seen in Call of Duty and I just, I don't understand how you can make a mistake like that. It just, it makes no sense. Anyways, so that being said, based off of all those reasons, I've really just tried to stick to domination and headquarters. I would play hardpoint and I would play league play as well. So whenever they add those two things into the game, I will definitely be trying that. Moving on, kill streaks. Don't really have much to say about kill streaks. They're pretty solid. The one thing I want to say is I wish they would cycle like a normal Call of Duty. You know, I'd like to earn my kill streaks again instead of just running out and dying on purpose once I get my last kill killstreak because there's no point in being alive anymore. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, killstreaks are kind of saving the game right now. If killstreaks were like really bad in this game, like they were in like Ghosts or something, I would have probably given up on it already. Like, can you imagine the score lines in this game if killstreaks were bad? I'm already dropping games where, you know, I can call in a chopper gunner or an AC-130 and I'm still finishing the game with like 25 kills. So thank God that the killstreaks are good or else people really might be dropping like 15 bomb score lines and that would be considered like a good game. Anyways, let's move on to the guns. I really like the gun customization this year. There's like 50 plus different attachments for each gun and it's awesome. I, I really like it. You can get each gun exactly how you want it, you know, whatever benefits you want and you know, whatever advantages or disadvantages you want to put on the gun, they have an attachment for it. That's great. Obviously, the best gun is probably the M4, but I don't consider it overpowered. Like compare the M4 to like an ACR or a FAMAS from older Call of Duties and the M4 doesn't look that great, does it? It's pretty average, but in this game, like it does kind of stand out as the best 
gun, but honestly, I think there are a few other ARs that can compete with it. The issue is ranking them up to get the appropriate attachments that make them good enough to compete with the M4 because the max gun level is 71, which is crazy, but the M4 can do really well at a lower level before you have all the attachments on it, whereas other guns that are really powerful, like the Odin or the Scar, they kind of suck at a lower level. You really need to like rank them up pretty high and get all the good attachments on them before I feel like they can compete with the M4. But you know, once you have them at a max level, then I think they're right there with the M4 as well. And not to mention the fact that ARs are just more dominant in this game in general because of how big the maps are and just because of how the game is played. ARs are automatically better than SMGs, but I think there are a few, you know, really good subs like the MP5 and the MP7 are both really good. The problem is you'll run into a lot of situations in this game where a SMG puts you at a, a major disadvantage. But I don't think SMGs are bad by any means. I actually think they're pretty good. They're just not as useful as ARs. Now, one thing that does need to be addressed is the range on the shotguns, especially the 725, I believe. I don't know. The one that looks like Olympia, the two shot. It's ridiculous, okay? It needs to be nerfed. The range on that is absolutely insane. I don't know what the deal is with Infinity Ward and giving shotguns the range of a sniper like we remember the models from MW2 like Infinity War just loves creating some super OP shotgun that can shoot you from across the map I don't know what the issue is with that but let's go ahead and fix that please but now finally last but not least of course probably the most important thing that needs to be talked about the maps Obviously, the maps are pretty bad. And as we already discussed, that's not an accident. You know, it's not a coincidence that the maps are bad. The developers have confirmed that the game actually was designed to have maps like this to help out bad players. And the game itself even confirms this because when you log in to the message of the day, they actually brag about the endless places to hide on Euphrates Bridge. They're, they're listing that out like it's a positive. Endless places to hide like yeah that's exactly what we want right we just want everyone hiding right you know i thought we were playing call of duty my bad you know i guess we're playing hide and seek now before i elaborate on the maps one thing that i want to talk about a very simple feature that has been in every other call of duty i believe has been removed this year and i couldn't tell you why but if you guys haven't realized you don't have the ability to vote for maps anymore in the pre-game lobby also side note after every game the lobby ends for some reason and you you have to get a new lobby. So basically you have no options on what map you get to play. You just get thrown into a random lobby with a random map that they chose for you. And the best part is after the game is over, you get kicked out of that one and get thrown into a random new lobby with a random new map. And you just pray to God that the game hasn't started already. Previous Call of Duties, you get thrown into a lobby, the game started, you play it out. And then the next time you get to play the next game right from the start, right? In this game, you know, if you're playing solo, I'm imagining that you probably just get put into game after game after game that's already started because you don't have the option to wait after the game ends to, you know, to start a fresh new game. You're automatically forced to back out and find a new lobby. So I'm sure that's horrible for solo players. But yeah, let's go ahead and bring back the map voting. I know that pretty much all the maps are pretty bad, but still some maps are less terrible than others. Some are, you know, tolerable. It's like if I was going to get fucked, right? at least give me the option of getting fucked by a 12 inch cock or a 4 inch cock right either way I know I'm getting fucked but at least let me choose the four, you know, so it don't hurt. You know, I ain't trying to get stretched out. That's pretty much how I feel loading up into a Modern Warfare map. Like, I already know that I'm going to get fucked. All I'm waiting to find out is just how bad it's going to be. You know, like when I load into Aenea Palace, that's a 15-incher right there. Like, get me out of there, you know what I mean? I'm not trying to be in that map. At least, you know, let me let me catch that four-inch, you know, the little man, all right? Let me get the Grozna Raid. That's a nice four-inch right there. We can tolerate that, right? Right? Just, you know, don't hit me with that 15. That's all I'm saying. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for the maps. I don't think I really need to expand on them too much. They suck. We know they suck. There's about 69 reasons why they suck. There's also about 69 camping spots on each map. And the best part is... That's apparently the way this game was created. This is how the developers want the game 
to be played. Now, one thing I do want to add on as a final note, just to be fair, is some of the upcoming DLC maps have been leaked. I wouldn't say it's like a 100% confirmation, but probably like 99% accurate. So we're supposed to be getting Crash, Shipment, Rust, Wet Work, and Terminal. Those are obviously just the remakes. There's going to be some new maps as well. Don't really have much hope for the new maps because they're probably going to be designed just like the maps we have right now. So I'm good on those. But those remakes, they do sound positive. You know, we'll probably get some other remakes as well. But I think this game just played on good maps would actually be pretty good. Like I can handle everything about this game, right? I can deal with the mini map. I can deal with the footsteps. But the maps just make it like 10 times worse. Like if I had those same issues, but on good maps, Maps, then it'd probably be okay like it wouldn't be as big of a deal I'd be able to handle it right I think the game would actually be really good on good maps but these maps are really just holding it back and they're just making every problem 10 times worse so final thoughts let's go ahead and wrap this up should you buy this game this game has some potential I don't think it's just downright terrible you know I definitely think it has some potential there are some things I do enjoy about it but it needs some pretty drastic changes and they need to happen ASAP, right? I think this game might be headed down the same path as World War II, where it started out pretty poorly, and by the time they actually made all the changes to make it into a good game, everybody already gave up and quit playing it, you know? Like, I think like six months into World War II, once they finally fixed everything, it was probably a good game, but by then, like, we already gave up, you know what I mean? You can't wait that long to fix the game and expect people to stick around. You know, would I recommend this game? Well, I'll describe to you what your experience will be like, and then you can decide whether that's something you're interested in or not. So if you're someone who enjoys playing extremely slow paced on large maps for the most part, I think you will like this game. Think of it like playing Ghost, but you only get to play on Stonehaven every time. This is the game for you right here, man. You'll love this game. Now, anybody that's interested in getting over 50 kills a game consistently, this game's not for you, man. You, you can't go into this game thinking you're going to get over 50 kills. That That is an accomplishment on this game. Anybody that wants to use an SMG and run around and, you know, get in gunfights with people, this is not the game for you. You're not going to have fun if you're trying to do that. Anybody that wants to camp in a building with two claymores and, you know, get one kill every four minutes, now this is the game for you. You will love this game. They have a lot of safe spaces for you to camp in. You will really enjoy it. So yeah, you can kind of decide based off what I said whether this game sounds like something you want to play or not. Anyways, y'all can leave your thoughts in the comments section down below. This was probably a, a pretty long video. I'm not sure, but uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like rating. If you enjoyed, subscribe. If you're not already, follow me on Twitter. Links in the description down below. Other than that, have a good day and peace out. Never ever find the right words And there's no way this is real life There's no telling you're the right girl So I can only say that it feels right It feels right, it feels right Yeah, I can only say that it feels right